It's 3 a.m. when dim street lights become the halos of the ghetto. I survey the perimeter perched in the pane of my window blowing spirituals. Right leg swings like pendulum from the ledge. I'm a mere ornament of the night. Docked above the catacombs of the city. Stars concealed like secrets hidden between black sheets of sky. Invisible to eyes peeled from open window seals, but below the gleam I see it all so clear around here. The antique stench of urine fills the atmosphere around here. Space congested with odors that should never become familiar fragrances to faces, but my nose doesn't know any better because this is my home. This is my block. I know the story behind things that could barely be called yesterday. Teething like babies from that boy. Numb gum speaking in heroin tongue. Only a few can comprehend the crack cadence of a cadaver, a dope vernacular spoken amongst the walking dead. I binge watch what's real, posted from my window seal is wide open. The illumined decor of the corners keeps these young niggas curious. That fire sparks their interest. I'm piercing at scenarios, trying to play out their next move, but we never share the same sentiments. No Jiminy Crickets to help them make their decisions, so I hover like a buzzard from my imaginary balcony. I'm watching it all uncover. I'm conscious of my surroundings. I bird watch the block. I know that every day around 6 o'clock when the sun sets and burns horizons, there's a shift in the energy. The air doesn't taste as welcoming. At about 7.15 is when my neighbor creeps. That same 77 powder blue caddy pulls up in front of the building and honks the horn rapidly, polluting the air with his impatience. She strolls out of something too small to hide her pedal. She's in full bloom. Heels click clack in the pavement. I can hear the Clydesdale in her strut. At about 9 o'clock is when all the young gangsters start rolling up on foot. The irony, how these cats duck school but still end up doing chemistry. You got to be calculated to cook white and stay in the black. Their stock market revolves around the low income of the block. See, most of these suspects, they stay in my building. They nickname this joint the tunnel. See, everything that smokes rolls through here, so I stay in my window, I keep my distance. I know how it is, and the risk ain't worth the riches. See, I've been looking for wealth. There's a difference. A rhythmic pounding interrupting my train of thought. A picture of a white lily in a cracked frame hangs from my battered wall. Bounces on and off with each thrust. I disregard the pleasures the neighbors to the left of me are having. Get your hands out of my pocket, sucker. A scuffle breaks out between two junkies over a syringe. <laughs> What's the point? When poking veins with needles dropped on vinyl, I always enjoyed the crackle. Mayfield drowns out the violence. Police sirens and crying music to my ears. It sounds like a place called home. I see nothing and everything at the same time. No snitching. These cats ain't fond of canaries, but steady bird flipping. Perched like crows trying to be eagle. They see no regal in their worth, but they all American. Standing on street corners because they couldn't cut it in college if they made it that far. The gridiron had too many wrinkles. They just couldn't fly straight. I could hear the pain in their voices from my fire escape window. There was a crescendo in the wind blow. The fluttering white lily finally found its balance. An eerie silence hugged the night air with a death grip. I sipped my shine in the shadows. I see Stevie bend the corner by the bodega on the north end. A bob in his step like he has a peg leg, his head's down, but I can see the vulture in his eyes. He is one long block away from forever. A parish of niggas congregate on holy ground on the south end. His eyes are locked in. Nothing stands between them and Stevie's intentions. They're really sitting ducks now. They won't even have enough time to duck down. He doesn't have to aim, just have enough rounds. Stevie's pace is becoming more assertive. The fact the crowd doesn't see him is making me nervous. I want to warn them, but they outnumber him, so I guess it's fair, so I watch. A squad car cruises the spot slowly. Red and blue sirens are flashing silently, providing some patriotism to the scenery. The crowd gawks and taunts the officers with gang signs and fuck yous. The police does nothing because this is something that they used to. Nine rides on by. Stevie never once breaks stride. His position is yet to be compromised. His eyes are deadlocked at whatever. At least, at least that's what it's looking like. Without looking right, Stevie almost gets hit by that powder blue caddy while trying to cross the street. Stevie stops. Tires screech. Stevie catches a glimpse of his sister sitting in the front seat. The driver blinds Stevie with his high beams. Now they're standing in the middle of the street. About four feet between Stevie and the crown grid of that caddy, a stare down commences. Catch the attention of the co-op from off the corner. They fall into a two by two formation. There's about 10 of them. Now I don't know if they're curious or they're militant. So I'm staring downstairs and then everything changes. The driver of the blue caddy is who Stevie's aim is. Stevie pulls a sword off from inside his pants like a sword. I can see the samurai in his eyes. He points it at the driver's head, demanded that he dares his engine. The block is silent. All those around are stuck. The sister doesn't move. She looks to her left at dude with barrel glue to dome. Her home is a mere block away. His home is mere buck shots away. At this point, no one is safe. The low growl of the caddy finally goes quiet. 
The driver nervously places both hands on the steering wheel, motioning for her to leave his car. She opens the door, exits Caddy, head down, staring at the yellow stripes in the street, leading her to Stevie. Stevie walks past his sister towards driver, knocks on window with double barrel, window rolls down slowly. The crowd is now corralled to Caddy. They're listening, they keep their distance. I can't hear shit from my window, but I can hear Stevie pump that salt off. The driver screams sorry, the people yell Stevie. His lips never broke to speak, his actions spoke louder than prose, but they standing on the corner at a distance trying to catch a John in the process. There's a lot going on tonight. Come on. There's a lot going on tonight. The engine comes back to life. Stevie whispers something in the driver's ear only that he can hear, leaving the rest of us in suspense. I'm watching this movie unfold from my top tier. I watch that caddy drive off until those taillights look black from here. Stevie and his sister walk back into the building. The crowd continues to occupy the corner. The neighbors to the left of me are now on the balcony, wrapped up in their bed, she's sipping on Coronas, and all of a sudden the power goes out. Uh, ain't that a bit? I don't even, I don't even know what time it is. Thank you, yeah. <laughs>